Hello, Polygoners! I am Shaft. You are watching a Polygon Gaming Daily Cast. We're breaking up our ZVP Bonanza for a little bit of Zerg vs. Terran action for you today. I've got a co-caster with me. Surprise, surprise! It's none other than a frequent guest of this channel and a Polygoner for life. It's Disrespect. How you doing, bro? I'm doing fine. How are you? Oh, doing great, man. I'm excited for this game here on Acolyte, because here on the top right-hand side of that map, in the blue Zerg trunks, he plays for Team Liquid. It's Thermy. Uh, Newsflash. Uh -huh. Actually a Terran. Actually a Terran. Did I say Protoss? No, you said Zerg. Did I say Zerg? You Did I really? Zerg. Holy yep. crap, guys. We're just going to go right past that. That didn't happen. Because here on the bottom left hand side of Acolyte, he is actually the Zerg in this game. He is in the red trunks. He is known for being a little bit of a cheeser. However, his late game has recently become top notch. He took a 30 minute game against Major, also known as Special, of all people. So he's got a hell of a late game. It's Bly. Yep. Team expert. Team expert. I guess they're pretty good. Yeah, I mean, they got a couple good players, you know, up-and-comers, like Beyond, Scarlet, you know, I think they'll be big in a few years. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree, man. <laughs> I, I see that Beyond fellow. Maybe someday he'll be able to win a GSL. <laughs> That's so cold, dude. So let's talk a little bit about the way this game is set up, because this was a gasless opener by Thermal. That's a big deal, right? Well, yeah, I mean, Bly is known as a cheeser, and, I mean, you Thermal, you, you, <laughs> you thermal obviously knows the game better than I do, but I don't really think you should ever go gasless against the cheeser. That Reaper is so important for defense. Well, um, but, right now, Bly just now getting link speed. This seems really late. He's already got Lair coming. Like, this is also a weird build from him. Roachworn starting? Mm. What's going on here? Well, it was a normal time speed, uh, finished around 327, which is standard, but mm -hmm. immediately after, with his next 100 gas, he took a lair, mm -hmm. and is now going for a Roach Warren, and he's saving up, he has a lot of open space at 40 out of 52, building another Overlord now, saving mm -hmm. up a lot of money, as you can see, this looks like a Nidus, and there it is. Yeah, okay, so that explains the fast lair, Nidus, Roaches, uh, probably gonna be uh, dropping that in the main, I would assume, or is this gonna be like a outpost outside of uh, Thermal's base, like inside base, outside base, proxy, like? Well, considering no Overlord position outside the main, I say it's gonna be in the natural, because um, mm -hmm. there's the Overlord right there. Okay. What? Natural, I mean, it's a back base, it's good for things like this. Um, the Terran generally, mm -hmm. you can see now you Thermal's throwing down a lot of bunkers in the front, so it might not be as well prepared for an attack in the natural as he otherwise would be. Yep, and actually there it is. is. Yeah. Alright, so moving right in, he's looks like he's going to be sending a squad of lings in here with the roaches, a little bit of a buffer uh, there. The overlord trying to keep vision here, trying to keep that high ground, but this means the marines are out of position. He's actually bringing the queens here. Uh, queens trying to chase down a lot of the SCVs, not targeting the command center, now targeting the command center. Some of that creep spread definitely coming to uh, help Bly. He's not dropping down any creep tumors just yet, and that's a lot of SCVs pulled for that bunker. I don't think he's actually going to be able to target that down. He's trying to keep uh, some vision of the high ground, but the overlord getting targeted as well. Going to have to retreat back into the Nidus, and that may be the end of that attack, but he is switching up into the top portion of this map and try and get an angle here on the SCVs. Some of the Marines are out of position here. Disrespect. The SCVs getting pulled. Going to be repairing that as quickly as possible. Great transfuses here by Bly and no mineral income at all right now for Euthermal. This could really hurt Euthermal but it looks like he's pulled off enough units to knock these queens back. It is so close man. There is no energy though. He is going to retreat right into the Nidus. Disrespect. This is getting nuts man. The queens are popping out here at the now as well my friend is this attack going to continue well i mean he's on 30 uh it's actually now on 42 workers building more so it looks like the all in's gonna stop but has it done enough damage considering he's on two bases and new thermal is on three command centers i'm not sure if it did i mean he's only on 22 scbs but mm -hmm. already having finished the one one upgrades i really i i can't say that it's done enough but i don't think Bly's quite out of this yet he definitely did enough damage to stay in the game. <laughs> Man, this is nuts, dude. This is nuts. Uh, however, three command centers. Mules are pretty good, man. Uh, Thermi's already got the 1-1 uh, upgrades. Stim pack on the way now. 
Mm. What's uh, what's Bly's next move? Like, does he continue all inning? Does he try to, like, I mean, there's an infestation pit halfway done. Is this Hive? Well, you can see that he's on Roach's, taking Roach speed, taking a third, and he's gone up to 45 drones, mm -hmm. which for Bly is quite a lot. Right. So, <laughs> I, I'd say this is going into a macro game. I don't think there's much you can really do against you thermal right now. There's a lot of bunkers. I don't think another Nidus could possibly work. Right. Um, and a frontal attack against a Terran in this kind of scenario, I think, is just doomed to failure when you're down on upgrades like this. So I think Fly kind of has to go into a macro game, but that allows you thermal to use his three CCs to full effect. Disrespect, I wonder, would Ravagers be okay at the front here? Because, like, all the armies back, scattered really back, the bunkers are far back. Couldn't he, like, knock down those depots and get in, or... Uh, too risky. There's, there's no tanks, man. Well, I think he'd be able to break down the front, probably, but the problem is Ravagers are pretty expensive, and they're also pretty squishy, so that would mm -hmm. almost be, like, continuing the all-in. I think that'd be... And they're also, like, a lot of gas, and right now Bly needs all of his gas for teching up. True. I think that's, like, not... I think just breaking down the wall, because I don't think he'd be able to break you thermal. I don't think breaking down the wall is enough to warrant not, like, getting the tech. I gotcha. Looks like I'm getting a lot of messages on my phone. I forgot to silence that motherfucker. Oops. Anyways, we've got some drops swinging in here by Thermy. He is going to the south side location first. And, uh, yeah, this is actually really powerful against Roaches, man. So, I like what he did here. He showed the drop on the top to the uh, Roach on the tower, because you know they're probably going to have the tower. Mm -hmm. He did that intentionally so that Fly would move his units to the natural, therefore mm -hmm. allowing these eight marines at the bottom to probably cancel this fourth, and it looks like he's going to get it. So, mind games. That, that's what New Thermal's getting small advantages with. Is that going to be enough to nullify the fact that at one point Bly had twice the amount of workers? I mean, I'm not sure. It's definitely important to not let them take their fourth. So, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's going to be able to do enough, but mm -hmm. it's definitely a good way to use all that you have to as much effect as you can. Well, that, that's pretty... I'm a little pretty... worried about that medevac on the bottom. The, the Ravagers are about to pop. You could bungle it. Yep, and there it is. It's going to go down. Ooh, that hurt. That hurt a lot, man. So, the third base pretty much just now getting established here for Thermi. And does that mean it's Bly's turn to do some attacking, or is he really waiting for this Ultralis Cavern to, to, to complete? Roaches and Infestors aren't great attacking units, and mm -hmm. Uthermal's only now taking his third when mm -hmm. he's had that command center for a long time. I don't Fair. really think there's that much Bly can do. I think you just expand from here and try to defend your bases from the drops you know are going to be coming in while mm -hmm. attacking up to Ultralisks. You can see the Chitin is plating already on the way. Melee attack upgrades. I think he's setting himself up for a really good position in the late game. So, are these players about tit for tat skill level? Like, it, just raw numbers? Or would you say, like, one of these players has a significant advantage over the others? Well, historically, I'd say Euthermal's better, but he's been in kind of a slump recently, and Bly's been looking mm -hmm. specifically good, so mm -hmm. I can't really say right now. I'd say they're pretty close to even, though, definitely, if it matched for each other. Yeah. Um, how does a style like what Bly's utilizing, because he's always known for like having his own style, how does this compare to something like Hydraling Bainley? Well, it's definitely a very different style from Hydraling Bainling. It's a lot more of a... Um, defensive slow style, just trying to get into the late game and utilizing the fact that as of right now, Zerg has a stronger end game composition than Terran does. Fair so, enough. So, this is a very Nurtio inspired style. It's what he made his name for. Um, and yeah, it's very different from what I would consider to be Bly's usual style of just mm. attack, 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 try to kill them as fast as you can. But True. It's, it's a really refreshing thing to see that a player like Bly, who's been around for so long, is starting to expand his back to tricks. Yeah, um, he, he's always been stylistic, but that's always been the thing I liked watching about him. Like, if I knew, if like, if I saw a replay on like, you know, a website, and it was Bly, or it was Nurcio, you mentioned him, or, you know, even Scarlet, a lot of those Acer players, really, um, I already knew ahead of time. Like, I didn't even have to watch the replay, I knew it was going to be different than what I was used to seeing. And that's always refreshing. Well, so we got these two attacks here, one on the bottom, looks mm -hmm. like one maybe on the top. Um, yeah, 
looks like he's getting funneled in through this choke point, trying to search type here, killing off that one uh, base there. But Fungorf going to take out those medivacs. Going to be the end of this attack. He did, however, manage to get the... Uh, the base and looks like there's an attack here at the north as well but that is going to be forced uh basically into retreating here disrespect yep i want to quickly mention this investor here at the fourth base of mm -hmm. uh euthermal um he had that there the whole time it was building he probably could have tried to cancel it with a bunch of infested terrans but as of now he's just going to keep it here and use it for a fungal when the time is right this yeah. could be a really strong maneuver if the terrans not expecting it suddenly just have your entire army fungal because you don't split in this situation like Oh yeah, there we go, even the fungal right there. Yeah, um, right on top of a scan though, like the scan went down, the fungal went down, beautiful play there. Roaches, Ravagers, and now Ultralis swinging in here, trying to kill off as much as they can. And looks like there's a lot of Marauders in this army, so Roaches, Ravagers, and Lurkers all pretty weak to that, but Widow Mines not quite a burrowing in time. Um, Planetary Fortress does survive, was this a wasted attack, or... Uh, those fairly decent trades for the Zerg. Well, he was attacking into a bunch of Liberators and a Planetary Fortress. The Fungal initially was really good, but I have to say, I don't think this is worth it for Bly. I think it would have been better to just try to poke away, um, not go for a full frontal engagement, running your Ultralists and the Liberators. So a little more subtlety? Yeah, maybe. Was it even necessary for him to attack, or would expanding be enough? Um, I don't know, they're... And that's a really hard question to answer. I mm. I don't know. I don't mind attacking. <laughs> I think right. defending would also be fine, just going to Broodlord. Because mm -hmm. once Zerg gets that ultimate army, it's really hard to beat. But I think either is kind of fine. Alright, well it looks like we're going to have a drop here on the south location. That base finally getting back up and getting knocked right back down. This is turning into a crazy game of whack-a-mole by Uthermal. And swinging right here into the third base location of four Bly, that Nidus Network. Gonna be uh, pretty useless on defense, but it looks like the first Infestor getting sniped there. And, well, going ahead and Bly getting out. Gonna see this hatchery yet again, gonna knock it down. What? Goes the mole. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that Nidus Network. I wonder if he's gonna try to use it again in this game. Oh, yeah. no cancel. Ooh, that sucks. Yeah, I really feel like, you know, if he's just through a couple of lings like in the main or the natural of Thermi with all this aggression I don't know if you Thermi's in a position really to deal with it because that would expose this this planetary yeah I mean it'd have to be a lot of lings he's been keeping a bunch of his army at home but mm -hmm. I could see it definitely working out although one thing I'd like to note he's been whenever he sends his medivacs down to the bottom he's mm -hmm. been taking them in a path that would probably spot any overlords in that area so he would have been able to kill them with liberators by now yeah, that's true. So, I don't think he's that worried about Anitis in the natural, at least, but mm -hmm. you can see the third, maybe. Okay. Be at risk. Yeah. This Overlord is in that position, especially if he just isn't looking at the mini map for even a split second. Well, a little bit of downtime here. Is there, um. Any particular, like, thoughts you're having? Oh, ooh. That was, that was a wasted drop. That's been there for a minute, too. Oh, uh, what happened? I didn't see it. Oh, there was a drop here on the um, western side that had been sitting here for a while. I saw it, like, set up, but it never ended up happening. There was a lot of action at the south that took our attention, and I guess it took Thermal's attention, too, because uh, it just got sniped by uh, by those corruptors. No way is he going to get that base again. Oh, my God. Oh, this is brutal, man. This is he brutal. Units, yeah, looks like he's going to. going to try to get that one last ult before going down, but Black mm -hmm. pulls it back. Very smart play there. Well, he's going to try to run the units home. As long as he but can get the medevacs out of here, that's really the important he's not part. Going to, though, the yeah. are going to kill him off. Ooh, that's brutal, dude. And oh, ultra. He got the ultra at least. Yeah. Or, and ultra. And ultra. Yeah. Mm, kiting's pretty good. Yeah. One thing I'd like to note here, though, for this entire game, uh, mm -hmm. euthermal has been down on economy because of the initial all-in, and mm -hmm. for the past few minutes now, they've been fairly even. So. Yeah. I don't know if Euthermal's going to be able to make something of that in this more late game scenario, but it's definitely a good thing for him. Who needs SCVs when you have mules? That's a very Zerg thing to say. <laughs> Just but hey, I mean, new patch is coming. I don't even know if the gas is used anymore. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. 
Mm, Seven Blue start. Lords on the way here for Vlad. This is going to be a really dangerous attack timing for you, Thermal. What do you think of like the transition period between Ultras and Brood Lords? I've heard a lot of players have like mixed feelings on it. Like a lot of people will say, you know, Ultras uh, can't fight because of the Broodlings and that sort of thing. And then I've had other players just say, I mean, you do what you got to do. Would I mean? Ultras are really good units, Broodlords are really good units, why not combine the two? That's what I think about it, you know? But huh. I'm not really a Zerg, and I don't, even when I do offer a Zerg, I certainly don't play late game CBT, so I can't hmm. really speak from that perspective on this. I'm sure no one on this channel knows that you like the cheese. All right, so it looks like uh, we've got the slow. Uh, clearly, <laughs> looks like we got the slow push of the brood lords. Liberators getting caught in a fungal growth. That was about half of them. Ravagers taking that down as well. It looks like another set of the uh, liberators getting taken out here. But now we've got the bio army swinging in underneath the brood lords, and this is looking a uh, little brutal. Four brood lords left on the map. Some of the corruptors as well. Ultralisk still on the ground, but getting cleaned up very quickly by marauders, and that looks like the end of the Zerg army. Uh, now dipping below the army count of Thermi. Uh, what what went wrong there, Dis? Wow. That that was an incredible fight for you, Thermal. Um, uh -huh. I'm very impressed. I cannot do that. What he did is he used all of, or not all, but most of his liberators in their anti-air mode, and with their plus one attack, he actually killed the Broodlords with them fairly quickly, because he mm -hmm. had enough to, like, three or four shot them. Right. And because of their AoE, a bunch of food lords died fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. And because of the base there, and there were a couple supply depots there also, mm -hmm. the Ultralists weren't ever able to connect with the bio, along with like the mineral line. So like a combination of like everything going well for your thermal and fly probably taking not as effective a fight as you could have, mm -hmm. along with some good fit mine hits, made that like a perfect fight for the thermal. I'm what? very impressed. Well, we've got another fight going on here. The Ultralisks taking the brunt of the attack. There's a lot of Ultralisks and a lot of Queens to support them. The Liberator does go down. The Bio is very, very weak, but Ultralisks off of Creep does mean some dead Ultralisks, and he's not even going to be able to retreat away. Another Ultra Down's getting fed into the... Again. Yeah, dude, this is getting nuts, man. There's so much action going on all no. over the place. This base is going to fall. There we yeah, go. Man, does target it down. The Ultra Lisk distracted him for a moment, but the Queens are taking a little bit of the attack here, but some still some great kiting here by Thermi. If he does another stem pack, though, it could be over for most oh, of these Marauders. Nice. Oh my god. It is so close, dude. Oh, you can't uh, kill your own units with stem. The stem just won't happen. Ah, okay. I thought, uh, yeah, okay. Cool. Eh. So, like, if these Marauders tried to stem again, the stem just wouldn't happen. Yeah, clearly I play Zerg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clearly I play Zerg, but well, no. Yeah, fly down to one base, and he's also down 70 supply. Well, 50 now, but you Thermal getting a good position on the... I have no clue what base that is. I'm bad at counting. It's... Hmm. Yeah, this is looking to be a really good game for you Thermal in a state of the game where I don't think Terran Bio without, like, ghosts can really fight, but this has been incredible play. I've learned yeah. a lot from this game. <laughs> really? Uh, that, that's awesome, dude. We've got about a double army supply lead right now for Thermi. I'm thinking this is going to be the final death throws, man. So why don't you share what you've uh, learned with the audience? Um, It's not like a specific lesson, just a lot about positioning in the late game against Zerg. My mentality against Zerg in the late game is kind of just, eh, ah, they have Ultras and Broodlords, GG, no re, nothing you can really do. Mm -hmm. But I've seen some really cool positioning tricks that I've never really tried before, so... I'll definitely have to test a couple of these things you thermal's been doing out. Um, okay. See how they work. <laughs> um, so, if you had to kind of wrap it all up in an overall theme of this game, that's kind of what we do at this stage of the cast. Um, what would you say like contributed to thermal's victory here? Like, what if you if you had a paragraph to describe this game? Well, from the beginning to the end, this has entirely been about Euthermal's incredible defense. The game started with Euthermal going for a fast 3cc build, and mm -hmm. Fly attempting to punish it with a 2 base all-in, and Euthermal just holding on incredibly with a great SCV pull. And then, later in the game, Fly did that huge attack at Euthermal's fourth, and again he held on with really good positioning, um, building placement, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then later on again when there was like the ultimate death army that's supposed to be nearly unbeatable for Zerg, Euthermal again with his incredible defense was able to overcome that. Right. So I think just defense, 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 just proper positioning, really impressive play. Well, you, 
if I'm well, there's still a little bit of the game left. Um, so like, let's just talk. Uh, well, oh, shit, this is actually a pretty cool little battle here. Uh, Liberator Zone's going down and hold this choke point. Ultra's trying to kite into it. I guess this game's not over yet. Bly is not giving up. Ultra is trying to kite in here, but the bio taking a lot of uh, stems here. Medivacs uh, keeping a lot of the bio alive, but going to melt here. Only like four. Four, six marauders left. About another six to eight marines there. Uh, trying to get the, some of these infestors in while burrowed, uh, but just not enough there for a fungal growth. And looks like this southern base will get sniped yet again, man. But what I was saying is, um, Terran <laughs> always seems like like you've heard me talk Wait, about the concept. It's the other way around. Now the top base is getting sniped. Huh? Oh. Okay. This time yeah. we did an attack on the south base and the top base was sniped. The whole game has been an attack on the top while the south base got sniped. That oh yeah, that's true. Like, he flipped that on his head. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> and now there's some ultralists, like, trying to do everything they can, but just the kiting, yeah. man, is so good. Um, but yeah, like, Terran holds positions really well. You've heard me talk about pivot units and liberators and widow mines and tanks and stuff. Like, defense is really worth, um, Terran shines, I, I, I think, and do a little harassment while you're defending? GG. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Hmm. I think it requires a lot of positional play and mm -hmm. just intelligent play. It's definitely not that easy. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, as a Terran player, Terran's the hardest race by far, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, I've heard that. Yeah. I'm sure you couldn't possibly say anything like that about Zerg. Uh, I feel like Zerg's probably the easiest race to play, play man. I, uh, I like having all my hatcheries on one key. <laughs> Dude, um, I, I use three hotkeys when I play Zerg. Oh god, I believe it. I, I honestly believe it, man. Well, anyways, dude, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Uh, guys, this is Disrespect. He is currently a member of Team Arrival, but Polygon for life, man. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. See you next time, guys. Shout out to my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.